This is our space oddity, evergreen forest style. <laughs> what happens when you mix a time machine with Cyril Sneer's greed? Ooh, unexpected results. Very unexpected. This is the Evergreen Forest. Quiet, peaceful, serene. That is until Bert Raccoon wakes up. Luckily, he has some good friends to help him out. Life would be simple in the forest except for Cyril Sneer. And his life would be simple except for the raccoon. in back taxes. $400,000? Did the pigs turn in all their expense sheets? Gee, Pop, I don't know. Where are those lazy swine anyway? Now we can go back in time and change things. It's foolproof. It must be, if you pigs are using it. What is this thing anyway? It's a time machine, boss. The possibilities are endless. Time travel could make you a fortune. Hmm, time travel. Let me see this thing. Oh! Ah. Hmm. Gee, I don't know about this, Pop. How do you start this contraption anyway? According to the manual that came with the kit, uh, you just press these. <laughs> That's a real go-getter attitude you've got there, Sarah. Who said that? My car. Up. That's me. Time observation monitor. Time tripping my speciality. Well, then, if you run this thing, let's see it work. I need money. A king's ransom. Wait a minute. Kings. Knights. You can change anything, right? Whatever you say, Sarah. Then take me back to the time the king and queen were expected in the evergreen forest. This is the time you wanted, Sarah. Rumor has it that the king and queen are visiting the forest. The royal family? How soon do they arrive? Here's your main chance to get back the knighthood lost by your great-great-great-uncle, Excalibur Sneer. Oh! This was a major embarrassment in my life. What's this? Bert Raccoon, after that same knighthood. There's only supposed to be one night per forest. Absolutely. And just look at that mansion. By the looks of it, you really expected to be that one particular night. Of course I did. Now get on with it. Which is just what Bert's doing. He knows that you can't become a knight without a rite of passage. <laughs> He's got the sword. He's got the shield. He's got the hair from a savage beast. I'd say he's doing well. Who asked you? He's got the most precious thing in the evergreen forest. That's it! I've got it all! Oops. No, he doesn't. You've stolen it. Uh, no point in doing all the work yourself, right, Sarah? 
Trash-talking time machine, anyway! Shh. This is my favorite part. Your stage debut, Cyril. You mean that this is all a play? Cool, that's your cue. My what? Hey, stop pushing! Don't you realize who I am? Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. What brings you, Fair Knight, to our forest? I was just in the neighborhood. I, I, uh, I just thought I'd drop by. Oh. Hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> it's all been a big misunderstanding, Bert. The king and queen aren't really coming. Ralph and Melissa are just putting on a play. A play? You mean that this was all a play? Phew. This could have been embarrassing. <laughs> it is! <laughs> Look at Pop! <laughs> My son, the traitor! Gentle sir, have you brought a gift for this great occasion? What? Uh, yes, I, I brought with me the most precious object in the kingdom. This is a precious object? What in the blue blood is this? <laughs> Put her in reverse. Stop it! Right! Here! Now get me in there! Just step over onto the transport plate, sir. I'm ready! Hit it! to the good name of Sneer. Arise, Sir Cyril, Lord of the Evergreen Forest and owner of all the lands therein. Here are the deeds. Rule wisely and well. <laughs> Beat me up. Time to go home, Cyril. I need my beauty rest. And by the look of things, so do you. Forget it. We're taking another little trip. Oh, where to, boss? We're going to shut down that rag of a newspaper those meddling raccoons love so much. I missed my chance before, but I won't miss this time. Not with my time machine. Ha <laughs> ha! change history, you set up shock waves that affect the future. You just felt one. Are we there yet? Yes, yeah, Cyril, here we go again. There you are doing what you do best, plotting. This time, you're getting Mr. Knox to help you buy up all the ink and paper everywhere, just to shut down the evergreen standard newspaper. Nasty plan. Nice logic. No paper. No paper. The first time around, you made a deal to pay Knox in gold, even though it would take everything One, you had. Two, four, five, six. Uh, you missed three. 
Your biggest problem was the deadline. Knox wanted it by noon on the 13th, and you missed the deadline, didn't you? The pigs thought your gold count was low. They decided to help you out by making gold from a formula they found in one of your books. Very commendable. However, an electrical failure interrupted their work. So, they decided to carry on at the top of Freen's Peak, using lightning to power their experiment. Unknown to them, Bert Raccoon had a similar idea, but he hoped to make gold to save the standard, because he's a nice guy. Both experiments failed, but Bert ended up with the gold. Your gold, sir. My gold? I mean, it, it was an accident, boss. Uh, uh, the book said we needed gold to make gold. Uh, we got it back! <laughs> Honest! <laughs> well, here we are at your press conference. You're announcing your, uh... Take over. So you're responsible for our supplies being cut off. But, Pop, that's hardly nice. Nice? This is the nicest thing that's ever happened to me. Pigs, call Mr. Knox. Hello? Uh, really? Are you sure? Mr. Knox's office. <laughs> well, it seems uh, you're a little too late. You know, you pigs are really revolting when you sweat like that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, boss. Uh, well, you missed the deadline, sir. They won't sell. What? But it isn't noon yet. He has to sell. They just told me it's uh, three minutes past. Three minutes past? How's that possible? Who set the clock? Who? Speak up! I'll make an example of them! Uh, I think you forgot something, Pop. You didn't read the Speak up! What secret policy? Uh, maybe I uh, shouldn't mention it in front of the employees. Blast them! Tell me! Well, Pop... You rigged the clocks years ago to be five minutes slow so you can get more work out of them and not have to pay them for it. <laughs> you must have forgotten. <laughs> Step onto the transporter pad and we'll get this sordid little deal over with. Just make sure I get that five minutes I need. It's me again. Do you still want to make a deal? Great. Hang on. Well, I can make this deal with Knox right now and shut down the Evergreen Standard for good. <gasps> or I can take over the paper and you work for me. <laughs> we'll never work for you. Knox, looks like we've got a deal. No, wait. Oh, we'll sign. Sorry, Knox. Deal's off. But let's do lunch. Soon. <laughs> These time storms are draining my energy reserves. If we don't go now, we may never go. I'll risk it. Now, take me to when those raccoons cheated me out of a king's ransom in pirate treasure. <laughs> All right. Time shift underway.
time storm, we're caught. Well, get us out of it! I'm trying. Can't break free. System malfunction. Danger. 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 Cyril, but we may not make it back again. Nonsense! You time machines are always exaggerating. Let's get at it. Okay, Cyril. The treasure hunt began when Brew found a treasure map inside an old boot. Ah! So that's where it came from. <laughs> Lucky we were eavesdropping, right, sir? Seems nothing stops Bert and Cedric. Not even solid rock. That raccoon must have solid rock between his ears if he thought I'd let him get away with this one. So you trailed them into the cave and relieved Bert and your own son of the treasure chest. Nice guy. I didn't steal it. The treasure was buried on my land. Uh-huh. The deed was a fake, Cyril. Ah! Details! Oh, have a good time. And here's that great moment with the cave defenses. I mean, you should have figured a treasure would be protected. You sure can move, Cyril, baby. Uh, it seemed like a good idea. Now, here's the real fun. Nothing like a day on the river, Cyril. Don't remind me. Oh, no need. You can see for yourself. My treasure! Get my treasure! Oh, no! Cedric, you get the treasure! Oh, okay. Swim like that! Gee, Pop, you know I got my gold lifesavers medallion from Young Aardvark Summer Camp. You put it in the vault, remember? You mean to tell me I lost my treasure and got myself wet for nothing? Uh, sorry about that, Pop. You really deal with disappointment well. I'll deal with it a lot better once I get that treasure. Uh, it looks dangerous, boss. No pain. Okay. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Can you make it to shore, son? No problem, Pop. Thanks for asking. No. Finally, I get to see what's inside the chest. Ha-ha! <laughs> With this, I can buy the tax department! Beam me up, Tommy! Ha-ha! <laughs> we can't carry the extra weight. Dump the pig! Boss! Oh, all right. But I'm not leaving without this treasure. Step on it! Leave me! You can't change history. Ah! You can't 
can't change his stuff. Goodbye, sir. Sure, you're all right, Pop? Of course I'm all right. I'm more than all right. I've been knighted. And I own the Evergreen Standard. But best of all, I've got enough treasure to pay off my taxes and then some. Pop, what are you talking about? The time machine. I went back and fixed things up. Pop, the time machine blew up when you turned it on. You've been unconscious all day. You mean... No treasure, no knighthood. This means I'll have to pay that $400,000 out of my gold reserves. Uh, Pop, I recalculated. Cedric, my boy, I'm proud of you. How much did you knock off? Well, nothing, Pop. It was more like add on $200,000. Oh, no! Now that's what I call time travel. <laughs> Well, time has shown Cyril's true nature. Once a gritty old fart, always a gritty old fart. <laughs>